Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, my beautiful pen friends, and welcome to another video with your host, Andrew. So you join me today for a comparison between these two pens. So we've got the Natuno 1911 God of the Sea Limited Edition versus the Mayor Impromptu Tree. So let's roll those titles and see how they perform. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at these two pens. But before we go on to the actual comparisons, I'm going to give you some size dimensions and such for both of these pens. So here we go, we've got the Mayora here. And then we have got the Nachino. So feel free to pause on the videos to see those dimensions. Okay, right, let's get on to the nuts and bolts and see what these pens are like in comparison to each other. Now these pens are in two different price brackets. Primarily limited edition versus a standard line, but these are both uh, made by Nino Marino and he has got a signature line of pens due to come out and I'll try and give you some updates about that uh, in the information at the end of this uh, channel in the news section. So well, let's have a look at these two pens. These are two very beautiful pens and they do share a little bit of um, similarities. Uh, but let's just start off with the Mayora and see what this one is like. So I've got in-depth reviews on both of these pens, but I'm just going to go over the actual functions and the aesthetics of these pens, and then I'll do the same with the Natuno, and then we'll do a writing sample, and then I'll summarise my thoughts and opinions about which pen would be for whom. Okay, so let's start off with the Mayora. We've got a conical top, beautiful tapered down graduated body on that cap. Very stylish clip. Yeah, very contemporary. And what I like about this clip is it is very practical. It does fit into the pocket. It's a little bit different to the regular sort of rollable clips from um, other Italian manufacturers. Nothing wrong with roller clips. They're absolutely lovely. Um, but it's quite refreshing just to see something a little bit different. Um, so let's go down. We've got a nice little gold band on there, or a gold ring. And then it sort of tapers down to a step down, which then, Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a gap, and I'll explain to you why in a moment. <clears throat> so let's just take that cap off. Now, underneath, I have got William Shakur to fit a inner cap into here. I was having problems with the pen drying out, and because I don't use this pen on a daily basis, it was becoming a little bit of an issue. Uh, I have spoken to Nino Marino, and he has said that he is trying to resolve the situation. So further iterations of this pen may come with an inner cap or a different uh, machining process, which would mean that hopefully pens won't dry out in the future. But I'll keep that held up and just turn it ever so slightly. Now, William was ever so kind in actually getting this actually produced for me. Didn't charge me a penny for it. Um, I couldn't have that, so I donated him a, a little sum of money just because of the time uh, which he had gone through to actually create this inner cap. We went through two different iterations and finally we found one which actually has a, a friction fit into there, so no glue was needed, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. And I can say that I've now left this pen uh, unused for about two weeks, just purely as an experiment, and it hasn't dried out, so that is fantastic. Right, let's just keep that cap off. Underneath, um, I have got a medium steel Yovo nib with a plastic feed. And uh, it is a lovely, lovely nib. Um, I have unfortunately somehow managed to scratch some of the plating. I don't know how I managed to do that, but uh, anyway, I digress. Uh, the pen is really, really comfortable, uh, comfortable to hold. And what I like about this, um, the section, if you have a look at this, it's got this hourglass figure, um, which comes up and your fingers and your thumb just really fit really nicely into there. I do prefer straighter sections, but this is really ergonomic. And uh, for many people, I think they're gonna really enjoy this section. It's um, something a little bit different to that of competitors. Um, if I just hold this one up as a comparison very quickly, uh, you can see on the Natuno, it's a very much a classical straight edge um, step down. So very nice. Still, it's got a little bit of a bevel at the bottom to stop your fingers slipping all the way onto the nib. Right, let's get back onto the Mayora. If we just unscrew the cap, sorry, unscrew the barrel. Underneath, we've got a standard international cartridge converter, but this is um, labeled with Mayora. Very nice. And we'll just put the barrel back on. 
comes on to uh, some very nice um, threads. They are not sharp, so when you hold the pen, perfectly comfortable no matter where you decide to hold it. Some people have a grip which goes up a little bit further. Some people have a grip which goes right down onto the section. Take this up ever so slightly with a step up. Comes to a couple of um, gold um, bands on there, or gold rings. And then it uh, gradiates all the way down ever so slightly to another brass ring. <coughs> and underneath, we have got a little blind cap which we can take off and then operate the, the piston knob on the end. Right, let's put that blind cap back on. And there we go. We've got a very similar conical finial on the bottom as well. All very nice. Now let's have a look at this material. So we'll put the cap back on. Oh, and let's uh, not forget we have got Mayora handmade in Italy. So there we go. Um, very nice, very nice indeed. So this material is fantastic. Um, as you sort of turn it around, you can really, really appreciate the depth and quality of this marbled um, or cracked ice pattern, I should say. There is some marbling going on in there as well. There's like little blue veins and it just provides an extra level of depth. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so that is the Mayora. And we'll talk about the writing experience in a minute. Let's go on to the Netuno. Okay, so on the top we've got a really nice uh, finial with this fantastic sort of um, ocean-like um, wave pattern on the top. Uh, there is a proper name for this. I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, it's early in the morning. Um, I do apologise. Uh, but really, really nice decorations on the top. And um, sometimes having a flat top gives you the ability to do something a little bit more special with the finial. Okay. Comes down on to this uh, main body. We've got these two beautiful uh, wave-like motifs going around the body, which then comes onto a clip, which is very, very reminiscent to that of the Mayora. Now, what is interesting here is that on the Natuno range, they tend to have a trident clip, which I think is certainly a little bit more in keeping. Uh, but this isn't so much of a review on these pens, it's more about a comparison between the two. So that's just something to, to look out for. Uh, then it comes down onto this very lovely blue, uh, which in certain lights does give a little bit more um, depth. Uh, you do have to be in quite light um, conditions, like I am here in the conservatory, to really see those patterns. But it's almost like um, a blue sand, which is just sort of swirling through. And it is absolutely gorgeous. We come down to another wave motif going around on this uh, rose gold cap band. And then it steps down onto the main barrel. So let's just take the pen cap off first. And then we have got an 18 karat gold medium nib. And these are handmade by Nino himself. Really springy nibs, and you'll see that in a moment. Plastic feed. And then again, we've got the same affair underneath barrel with a Natuno cartridge converter. Very nice indeed. Um, both of these pens um, hold a decent amount of ink. With this 18 karat gold nib, you will um, run through ink a little bit quicker because this is much wetter than that on the steel counterpart. Okay, as I said uh, before, we have got a straight section and then we've got threads. Um, again, they don't dig. And then it steps up ever so slightly and then tapers down with that gradiated effect all the way down to the bottom where, very similar to the Mayora, we have got a blind cap which gives you access to the piston. And then if we put that back on, lovely. So those are the pens in real compatible. But let's just um, swirl that pen around just so you, you can have a bit of a close up to the pen. Very nice indeed. Would like to see a little bit more shot points in this material, uh, maybe in a future limited edition. Um, I certainly think the spaghetti resin of the uh, the, the Mayora limited edition Vesuvio is certainly a lot more attractive, but I really love blue. And this blue and the rose gold is such a beautiful combination. Uh, I would love to see, as I say, a little bit more depth with the material. And I think with that depth, you would be really onto a winner. Um, okay, so let's move on to a writing sample. And then I'll do, uh, I'm not going to do a size comparison today because it is literally a head to head. And then I'll give you my thoughts and opinions as well as a little bit of news. So stay tuned and follow me into the next section.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we've got some Midori paper, but I thought I'd take my reviews into a slightly different direction. Um, I'm not going to do the quick round fox today, uh, just purely because I have got other examples of that. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually start introducing performance, style and bounce, just so we've got a little bit of a matrix going, um, which you can actually get a little bit more of a, uh, a numerical idea of how these pens perform. So, I've got these uh, sheets uh, laid out. So let's uh, get going. So we've got, first of all, the Mayora. Ponte Tree. The ink. I believe, I think I've got uh, Pelican. Or is it? Ooh. I think it's Pelican Edelstein. Tanzanite. Yeah, I think that's what I've got in there. Sorry, um, I haven't, um, <laughs> I should really keep my uh, my inks uh, sort of next to my pen so I can actually see what I've got. Um, I do apologize. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, let's, let's carry on. Apologies, that is a question mark. I'm gonna put that there. <laughs> okay, so this is a medium nib. Um, and you can actually squeeze out just a hair bit of line variation. So let's just not a massive amount. In fact, probably hardly anything whatsoever. But you do get a little bit of something. Um, let's just write down M S for medium steel. Okay. Right. So the wetness. This is Midori paper, and I can tell you it will absorb it pretty quickly, but it's pretty wet. Um, if you're doing this on, say, Tomori River or Rhodia, which is a little bit more waxy, uh, you'll find that this um, pen is a lot wetter. But I love this Midori paper, uh, I really do. So, performance of this pen. Now that I've got this inner cap, is a solid 10. There's no skipping, no hard starts, it's smooth. It's a you know fantastic writer. Style, because it is so unique, I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. And bounce, one. There is not really any bounce whatsoever out of this pen. So really it is an absolute um, stunning pen. This material is fantastic. So let's move on to doing the Netuno and then I will do my thoughts and I'll see you then in the next section. Okay, just like uh, I have got with the Mayora, and I did check it was uh, Edelstein, which I had in there. Uh, so let's have a look at the Natune. So Now, on receiving this pen, I've noticed that this is a little bit stubby. Uh, I think uh, when my friend um, had purchased this pen, the previous owner may have put a different grind on this pen. So doing this at an awkward um, angle can be a little bit um, misforgiving, uh, unfortunately. Uh, it's unforgiving, I should say. Misforgiving? Unforgiving, yeah. <laughs> I can do words. So yeah, it's it's not, it's not brilliant trying to write at this angle. It's definitely designed to write more square on. Anyway, this is the 1911. God of, let's see. Now this is 18, see, yeah, that skips a little bit, 18K. Gold nib. Okay. Ink is Santini Blue. Mm. 
You'll notice that on some horizontal strokes it uh, has a tendency to skip as well. So we'll cover that bit in a moment. Line variation, however, you're going to love this. I'm not going to overflex it. And there he just starts um, giving away. Um, unfortunately, uh, you do have to sometimes prime the feet with this pen. So just give me a second. And I will force a little bit of ink into the feet. Not something I'd like to have to do on a review, but I am always fair and just. So let's have a look at that again. There we go. And as you can see, this is a really bouncy nib. Now, I could get a lot more line variation out of this, but that is about as willing as far as I'm going to go with this pen. The wetness of this pen is fantastic when it's writing. As you can see, it is a lot better. And I'll put the size, well, the actual comparisons between these two nibs up. Now, I'm going to have to be honest about this pen. The performance, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. And that's no way in a reflection to Nino's work, but it's more to do with the fact that I think whoever the previous owner was has somehow stubbified the actual nib and I don't know why they would have done that. Style, however, I would give it a nice solid 8 out of 10. There are a few things on here which I would change. but I do absolutely adore the colour of the pen. I love the rose gold finish. I think it's um, absolutely stylish um, and bounce when it's working. A good 9 out of 10. Now, I'm referring to bounce, I'm not referring to full flex when I'm doing these uh, comparisons. When it comes to doing a flex pen, I am going to write down flex, okay, and I'm not going to write down bounce. So please don't get bounce and flex mixed up, okay. So if I'm giving a 9 out of 10, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 purely because, as you can see, it is a very bouncy nib, okay. When I start doing things like uh, the Santini uh, flex pens, or if I look at some um, Scribo, I would then give it the designation of flex, just so we have got some clarity on that. Right, so let's just put these two side by side if we can. I'll zoom out if I can. Oh gosh, there we go. So we've got some comparisons here. Now, I should really have a matrix for value, but I think value is such a, um, a subjective thing, and I know I've um, done style, but Value is something which is down to your own personal finances at the end of the day. I know you can obviously get pens which are uh, vastly much more expensive and yet you can still see good value in them. That unfortunately I think comes more down to you. But I would say that both of these pens do present excellent value for money from my own personal perspective. And I'll reconsider maybe adding that as a matrix going forwards. Right, so... Those are the two sheets in comparison. I apologize if you can't see everything, but the lens which I've currently got with this um, tripod set up uh, would not really give me the opportunity to show both. But as you can see, we've got good performance on both pens in general. This one definitely, um, I think out of the box would have been a lot better um, had it not been for someone trying to uh, add a bit of cursive italic to it. I think that's what they've done. Um, but anyway, Enough rambling, let's go back to my face and I will give you my thoughts and opinions and I'll do a little bit of um, some close-ups as well of both of these pens. So then ladies and gentlemen, having a look at both of these pens, I realised that this pen poured um, more poorly in comparison to this one, but that's not to say that this pen isn't good. It's fantastic, it really is, it's a, a lovely pen. Sometimes matrixes don't necessarily give you the full story, which is why in the past I've not um, done them. But I thought, you know, going forwards, it might be quite fun just to experiment and see um, if this is something which you like. Uh, please do leave a comment in the section below if you can think of any other matrixes you'd like me to include in my reviews. So, uh, yeah, anyway, let's get back to these pens. Both absolutely gorgeous pens. As you can see, both have got um, lovely materials, although I'm certainly more in favour of this. I do like depth to material and the Mayora really does provide it and as I turn it again you can really see how beautiful this uh, material is and yeah it, it's, it's stunning. I really love the appointments on this Netuno, the various um, trims on here with this sort of wave motif, uh, the finial, it's, it's a really nice pen and it's just a shame, I think, that uh, we didn't get the trident clip on here. But 
you know, it is what it is. Um, I always admire a company for trying something a little bit different, um, trying to break the mould a little bit, so to speak. And it really is um, absolutely beautiful. Uh, this um, 18 karat gold nib, when it performs, it performs absolutely flawlessly. And as you can see, you get a really generous amount of bounce with this nib. It, it really is absolutely fantastic. It's just such a shame that it does have a tendency to skip. Um, I'm sure if it was sent off to a Nibmeister, they would be able to fix those issues and you would have a, a wonderful, wonderful pen, or even if you've got the skill yourself. So, in a nutshell, it's one of my favourite phrases. <laughs> um, I, I love both of these pens. Would I buy this pen? Possibly not. I, I think um, there are other pens in this price bracket which I would generally prefer, even some with um, steel nibs. I do love this um, 18 karat gold handmade nib. It's just that I'm not quite warming up to the material on this pen. Um, but that is subjective and it may be something which would interest you. I really love this um, Mayor and Prompt A3. It's, it provides good value. Roy from Izzords um, in the UK does an absolutely stellar price. You can get the oversized, which this one is, for the same price as, well, as when I last checked, as the regular size, which in my mind's eye doesn't really make any sense. But <laughs> anyway, uh, if you do like oversized pens, you don't pay any extra if that is something which you prefer. And if you prefer a regular size, then of course you can go and pick one of those up. It's entirely up to you. Anyway, that is the, the pens in a few, so to speak. Let's um, now talk a little bit about um, Nino Marino and what he's got um, planned in the future. Now, Nino has got a signature line, which he has um, just started, and Peter, uh, which is a friend of mine, I'll see if I can provide a link and give you something in the description. And <clears throat> I'll try and overlay some pictures right now. He has done this um, wonderful collaboration uh, with Nina Marino, and he's got these very interesting materials, as you can see. Um, I will have to overlay what the actual material is because, again, I can't remember the name of the material. My brain isn't functioning very well this morning, so I do apologize. And yeah, it's, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, they are not cheap, but then these um, materials are very rare to find, apparently. Um, almost as rare as some celluloids. So, yeah, it, it's, it's certainly something to um, to note and something you may want to um, add into your collection in the future. Also, Nino does have an Ebonite pen coming out soon and unfortunately I can't overlay any pictures yet because it's still not necessarily a top secret project but it's a, a project which um, until it's released, I don't think um, Nino really wants any pictures um, shown. But I can tell you it's going to be an Ebonite pen, it's going to be a piston filled, and I believe they will have gold nibs. And again, there will be limited editions. Those pens should be due for release soon. Um, I'd like to say in the next few weeks, but obviously with COVID, that may have um, pushed things back, um, certainly in terms of shipping and production. Um, but yeah, it's certainly um, worth looking out for. Now, uh, we, I am going to be doing another Christmas guide video next week, um, talking about pens which you might want to consider for Christmas, and that is going to be the sole purpose of that video. Um, I've also got a another Arushi pen in the pipelines, and um, that's from Michael uh, at Tamanuri Studios. Or is it Mikhail? Uh, I do apologise if I butchered your name, but anyway, um, I've got that coming um, in the next week, and hopefully. Um, I should get maybe a double whammy next week of uh, reviews. I might get one done on Saturday and Sunday, but we'll see how we do. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening, and I shall see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and goodbye.